Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. We're here with the beginning of Horrortober. It's it's October, so it's all Halloween and horror uh, pictures for this month. This is a colour and catch up. This is going to be the first one. Um, just a quick note that I forgot I had two other, at least two other picture books that had Halloween related pictures in, and that's Lady Sunshine's Halloween Volume Four, and of course Hannah Carlson's Seasons. Now, of course, there's also Halloween pictures in. The romantic country picture in, in the romantic country books i've not pulled them out just simply because i'm trying to do pictures in each book that i haven't yet colored in so i have colored a picture in each of these books but i have pulled them out because this is going to be one you know i could do one of these quite quickly they're nice simple designs and the which one in seasons i really do like and of course seasons will stay out for christmas because obviously in december it's christmas and we'll be doing all christmas ones or winter ones so today we're going to be uh, joining in with the bibliophile colorist John and his biblio horror um, with the beauty of horror and like him we're going to use watercolors now I have never I'm just going to take the cover off I've never ever used watercolor pencils not really I do have the Derwent um, metallics and I do have the Derwent skin tones but I've not really used them so this is going to be completely new for me. We're going to use similar colours to him on the, the, the beginning of the shining page. I do have my own ideas for it as well, which is this one. Um, so I'm going to use similar colours. I've just got to get them up. But um, he's using the Arteza watercolours, which I don't have. I'm just going to try and zoom in a little bit. As you know, I'm using a new camera. I'm not very good at it. That'll do. Um, I don't think that actually did anything, but hey, I don't know. I've got to fiddle with this camera. Um, I'm using the 36 WH Smith watercolours that I bought for colouring on a budget. So I thought we'd use them on this as well. I may use a bit of, I probably will use normal pencils over the top and I may even use some ink tents on certain pieces of it. Now, I am left handed so I am going to work from right to left instead of left to right. But like him we're going to start on the walls. Now these pencils don't have names, um, they don't even have numbers. I have actually numbered them myself so I could swatch them. Let me show you the swatch if I can find the book, here it is. So this is the colours, the 36, so we're using number 7, we're going to use number 29 and we're going to use number 31 or 2 I think. So what, you know, basically we're just going to give it a try. We will start over here, let me see if I can zoom in, I don't know, this does not want to zoom, oh right I'm using the wrong, I'm going the wrong way for zoom in, right okay. And we'll just give it a try. Um, I kind of know how I'm going to do the rug. And I know how I'm going to do the dresses and the curtains. So I don't know how John's going to do it. But um, like I said, I have never ever watercoloured before. So this may turn out to be a complete and utter disaster. But you can share it with me. So yes, as I've advised, I will be um, doing only horror and Halloween related pictures in October. In November, we'll be doing Anything Goes. So we'll be trying to finish off um, some more whips. So for instance, I've got the Henry's Book Whip in romantic country to the second tale now I did do a bit of that last night when Paul was watching the football I was listening to Good Omens on audiobook and I thought do you know what I'm going to actually do some of that so I've only got the books to do and there's quite a lot of books on there so I've done most of the picture in pencil but the books, I'm actually making them really pop out by doing them with gel pens. It's just to, to try something different. So like I said, I've never watercoloured before. And I may never again on camera. 
Now, swatching them, I've actually really liked you. I like the way some of them lay down. Some of them, not so much. Some of them are a little bit harder to use. But because I've never done watercolours before, I thought it'd be nice to, to give it a try. So we're using that one, and then we're using what I've called number 29, which is sort of like a, I guess it is a caramel kind of colour. So like John did, we're just going to do a little bit over the top. So I have no idea what this is going to look like. And we're not going to copy John completely. We are going to do our own thing as well. Like I said, I, I already know how I'm going to do the rug, what colour, what colour I'm going to do the floor. And the girls' dresses, excuse me, kick in the camera. I do apologise. Um... So I've never done it. I mean, I don't have the, any RTs or pencils. They are on my list of ones I want to get. And I know he says to do circular motions, but I'm a very impatient colorist. I'm I'm not good. I'm not good, and I'm not patient. I hate going over things. It's like I know pe some people lay down a layer of marker, and then they lay down a layer of. Um, pencil on the top I really really have not got the um, the patience for that I really really don't um, I get bored very very quickly I think it's because I have so much to do in my life that spending too long putting layer upon layer is just too much for me. What with working, not full time, but 20 odd hours a week. And then doing the videos, which I really love doing. And I love doing my weekly vlog and everything and vlogmas and that. But then having to do my eBay business as well. I don't really have a lot of time to um, spend on doing it. So we're gonna see how this looks now when we activate it. So good luck with this for me. This is all new. So we'll start in the middle with the very light color. It is a lot brighter than like it actually. I, mean, I do like the way the watercolours blend. I mean it looks like there's alright so yeah I mean if I enjoy watercolour in I will get some more watercolour pencils and I might get the RTs and the bigger set I mean I do I like using the ink tents it's just because I have to sit up here and do it it's it's difficult because obviously I've got to do it when Jennifer's asleep because of um, making sure she's not feeling left out so yeah right back to what I was saying about what we're doing in each month so in November it'll be complete some pages in any colour books um, so finish off any whips like Romantic Country I've got um, a whip I started with ink tents in um, Enchanted Forest which is the title page and there's a couple of other whips that I've started in various books. I'm going to try and finish those. And then we'll try and do some pages in books we haven't coloured in. 
So for instance, I've got the famous five one. It might be nice to see something in that. I've got World of Flowers. Oh, I've got so many coloring books I haven't coloured in yet. So we'll try and decide. But like I said, we will spend some time trying to complete the whips that I've already got so that we end the year with hopefully no whips at all. That would be lovely. And then in December, it's going to be Vlogmas, obviously. And of course, we'll be colouring only Christmas and winter scenes. So Christmas, obviously up to the 25th and Boxing Day. And then obviously after that, we can finish off any Christmas whips we've got. And we can do some winter scenes. Now I'm already looking at some Christmas colouring books to buy. Like I've got one on order from Creative Haven, which is their new one comes out on the 30th of November. So I'm looking forward to that. That will be fun. And then... Um, can't wait to get that one. I've got some other Christmas books I haven't coloured in yet. And I might get a few more. I'll probably get some Creative Haven ones because I really like the fact that the Creative Haven books are so cheap. You know that they're £3.99. And one of the other things I want to do is get some metallic paints. Now, I did say I wasn't going to buy any more colouring books, um, other than things like the Colour in Heaven, Halloween. But somebody recommended the new Deborah Muller book, Full Friends, to me. And I saw it on, I don't know whose channel, or somebody's channel. And I thought, oh, that does look rather nice. So I ordered it. It's arrived today. I haven't opened it. I haven't had a look at it yet. So you might see that. So thank you for recommending it. You know who you are. Yeah. I can see that this will take a while to do. So my shed is up, um, if you watch the weekly vlog when it goes up at the end of the week or the beginning of next week, you might see a bit of the shed. There is some footage of it, of, uh, it's now complete, the floor's down, I've just got to start moving all the junk into it, tidy up the garden then as well, get it ready for winter, currently emptying and cleaning the paddling pool, because, you know, We had some nice times in that pool over the summer and hopefully we'll be able to use it again next year. I um, will be getting a car tomorrow. It's not a permanent car for me. It is a loan to see how I get on with it. It's a Honda Civic. So the guy I get my cars from, he's got a Honda Civic and a Picasso and he recommends the Picasso but it's not ready. Picasso is slightly more money but I know that. We'll have to have a look to see if we can afford it and if he'll take instalments because obviously nursery fees have gone up and they're very very expensive. But I do have, I've been driving my dad's Astra it's a nice car but tomorrow I get this, I'm going to put the car seat in the Honda phony insurance company get the insurance transferred from my old Astra to the Honda Civic might even go down because it's worth less than my car and we'll um, we'll see how it goes Then it'll be nice 
Dad can have his car back. Which I think could be good because last week I had to take Mum and Dad shopping because I had their car and of course that plays havoc with Jennifer's naps. It's bad enough this week as it is um, going on to get the Honda tomorrow. Because obviously I've got to have the car, I've got to get the car seat put in it. And then I've got to um, I've got to go to the doctors on Thursday about this chest infection I recently just got rid of again. So I'm not quite happy with that, it's not blended well enough, so I'll re-blend that in a minute. Because there's one thing you can do with watercolours is it will re-blend. Link test hence won't. So I'm just going to colour in this entire wall and then But like I said this is a first for me and I'm actually quite enjoying it. I do quite like the way it looks. This paper does take it very well. It's quite smooth. It is taking it very well. But uh, Like last week when I had to take mum shopping, mum and dad shopping on Thursday and Friday. Um, the one night, I think it was the first night, Jennifer just would not go to sleep in the eve in the afternoon. When we got back, she just would not go to sleep. And then it was like really late when she did go to sleep for a nap. She normally has an afternoon nap. Still, and then she didn't want to get up. So she slept through dinner. And then she woke up about one o'clock and she was awake for a couple of hours, which of course plays havoc with my sleeping pattern and I got to work in the morning. So if I can get her home and put her pretty much straight down, she will sleep for a couple of hours and then she will she'll wake up. And then when she's awake, she'll have tea and she's fine. But yeah, so it was very odd. It's very odd for her, very hard on her because she gets very grumpy then and she needs to have a nap. And it's like today she didn't really want to go to sleep. It was her later nap day anyway because we go to mum and dad's on a Tuesday and I go and do I had to go to the bank and get some money out for the car and I had to go and get I'm getting money out for our holiday as well ready cause, um, I need to get some money changed but and she didn't go to sleep to about three and then she was up about four Grizzlin. I took her up to bed because she wanted to cuddle. She's been up there for a while. But she's got a bit of a cold as well, so she's not very happy at the moment. She's very grumpy, sadly. So, yeah, she's very grumpy. So this is all new, this watercolour in. I am liking the way they go in. They, they are looking quite nice. Um, yeah, it is looking quite nice. Is that the one I'm using, number two? Yeah. 
I don't know how much of this you can actually see. I'm a little bit at the top at the moment, so just gonna. So I've got a brush pen. I haven't got much water in it though because I'm having trouble putting it in. I can't find my pipette. I do apologise if you haven't been able to see actually what I'm doing. It's really hard. I need to figure out a better camera system. But I don't like us better. Obviously at the moment I've got a problem with my mobile phone in the sense that the baby broke it. So I can front film, I just can't back film. So it would be alright for this. But it wouldn't be alright for, for vlogging. And I do a lot of... Like my weekly vlog is normally done on the phone, obviously. Not at the moment. So yeah, I, I'm quite liking the way that the watercolours are going on. Like I said, I've never really... I've used the ink tents. But I've never really used watercolours. Not like this, not in a colouring book. I've like painted with them. I'm not, I can't paint by the way. I can't draw or anything like that. But I quite like him using them in a colouring book and I think I'll, I will use them again and I might treat myself to the uh, teaser ones. And then I might even save up and get the Faber Castell Elbrecht Duel. Really good ones if I really enjoy it, and at the moment I am. I think I'd enjoy it more if I wasn't colouring chatting because it would be easier. It's very difficult to do it with the camera tripod in the way. Um, but uh, yeah, it's so I want to thank John over at the Bibliophile Colorist for giving me the inspiration to try something completely new because I could have bought these for the budget colouring thing, which is what they were bought for, and then just never used them. But um, because he, I'm just doing down in this corner, was using his for doing this, and he's using the Artezas, which are really nice pencils. And, you know, thank you, because I would never have thought of trying it on something like this. It's so easy to stay with what you know. That's that so far. That's the one side of the room. The hallway, I know it's the other side. So I've obviously, I'm still working from right to left because of being left-handed. I may well have to turn it over to do this bit. But, yeah. So my plan is, in the shining, I think the girls' dresses are blue, and I'm happy to do that. And there's some lovely blue colours in this palette, in this set of watercolours. And the rug, I think, is red, and I will be doing it red, I think. And I will probably put ink tents on that. The shoes are probably be black. I think they have white socks on, or very pale blue socks. So i probably use my ink tents as well. So we've got a long way to go yet. So I'm going to be trying to film colouring videos two or three times a week this month because I really enjoy making them. Um, and I have an idea for the channel that's going to change certain things. So. As you know, I also do a lot of Marilyn Monroe related videos, whether they are book reviews or my scrapbooks. Um, and I've got so many videos on that that I was thinking of starting up a totally separate channel. Sorry about that, Paul came down, needed the bathroom. So, what was I saying? Oh yeah, um, yeah, I'm thinking of starting a separate channel just to put all the Marilyn stuff on. Um, let me know what you think. Is that a good idea? Should I have a separate Marilyn channel? Keep this one for general reading and colouring? Or should I just leave it as it is? A bit of a hodgepodge. Because people say you should specialise and have a niche. Like you see the colouring and the reading sort of goes together so 
that's why people do them but I sort of stick everything in bit of photography bit of reselling general life vlogs reviews I obviously do have a separate channel for music but I hardly ever update it just because I don't have the time sadly to do the um and I'm not in focus I'm not in thinking this is the problem with this I can't really see what I'm doing with the other camera the one that's not working and I will have to see if I can get it working even if it's just for doing this the screen flips out sideways this one just flips up or down it doesn't flip out sideways so I can flip it down but it doesn't make any difference I can't see it I can't flip it to the side or I could flip it up so I can see if I'm on camera I can see where I am in the frame because I've turned it off I don't know how much I've actually done minute wise so so I'm probably a bit more wary of um, doing the watercolours than someone like John who knows what he's doing because he's done watercolours before I noticed he was pressing quite hard with his pencils to get the colour down. I hate when you get to the inner edge like that. Because, um, yeah. Gotta be careful. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to having a, a car. Just so that my dad doesn't have to go without his car. So I can't really talk to you about watching TV because I really don't watch a lot of television. I am going to see the new Renny Zwelliger music movie, which is um, about Judy Garland, hopefully this weekend. So you may see a bit about that in the weekly vlog. I know there's a lot of people in the Judy community who are against the, the film because it's not true to life and some of the things never happened. But unfortunately, that's the way it is with biopics. The truth is never interesting enough for people. They have to make up extras and make it more damning than it was you know judy you know judy was troubled at the end of her life i have not seen the film i don't have not seen the play that it was based on even though they threw out the majority of the script for the play which is a good thing but yes there are certain things that never did happen um that have never ha that never happened that are in that that um film as far as i'm aware but I'm willing to watch it. I like Renny Zwelliger. She can sing, but she ain't no garland. I'll give you that. She ain't no garland. I loved her in um, Chicago. Thought she was absolutely brilliant. And obviously, best known for playing Bridget Jones. But I am looking forward to, to seeing it. I mean, I haven't been to the cinema in a, a long time because A, it's expensive, and B, it's getting somebody to have Jennifer, which is fine, my mum and dad are gonna have her, they're happy to have her as long as they've got toys and books and food and snacks and stuff, which we will take over for her. Um, but I, it's something I've wanted to see since I learnt it was coming out. Um, I like the trailers. The trailers look very good. And the costumes, while they're not exact, they're pretty good replicas of the stuff that Garland wore. I know I'm going to have people hating on me now for saying that I'm looking forward to it. And I'm one of those people that, that although you can say, well, this didn't happen, this is happening in the film, this didn't happen in real life, I want to make up my own mind. 
I won't judge anything based on anybody else's review. If it's something I want to see or read, I won't let somebody, oh don't read that, it's a waste of time, it's rubbish. I need to find out for myself why. You can give me all the reasons and your reasons may be correct, but I have to find out for myself. It's only fair on me and it's only fair on the person who was either in that film or wrote that book or wrote that screenplay. Now I think from what I've seen, Renee's Welliger does a fairly good job. I, I don't know because I haven't seen the whole film yet. And I am a Judy Garland fan. I've been a Judy Garland fan for many, many, many years. I've got many books on her. I've read many books on her. I've seen many biopics, many of her films. I've got a lot of her records. You know, she's second only to Marilyn for me. And I um, absolutely love her voice. And people say at the end of her career, her voice was shot. It wasn't what it was. Well, of course it wasn't. She was 47 and lived, and lived those 47 years, you know. She didn't have an easy life. But if you listen, there's, there, a book came out um, a long time ago called Heartbreaker by John Mayer. And he wrote some songs that Judy recorded in the late 60s. And he recorded her singing some of these songs, rehearsing for a show um, to a piano. It's very basic. And the book copy of the book I've got contains a copy of those songs on CD. And even though her voice wasn't what it was, I was still blown away by her. And it, I've actually said, say what you want about her, but even at her worst, she was better than anybody else. And we will have days where we don't want to go to work and we can phone in sick and we all have days when we don't want to do our job. We don't, we're not well. And we don't do it. And we, we do kick off and we all play up and we all have our moments. The difference is that you, me and Joe Bloggs next door don't have to do in front of the world's media. We just get on with our own lives. And, you know, somebody may make a, a, a deal about it but maybe not a major one. Somebody might say to you, oh, don't be such a diva, grow up, get on with it, it's not the end of the world. You can't let people down. But they're not doing it in front of the world's media. And, that's the, that, and that is the only difference between Judy Garland and me, and you, is her life was lived in front of the media because of who she was. Now, you could say that's her own fault for becoming a star, but it was her mother that pushed her to be a star. I mean, she wanted to sing at times, but there were other times where she just wanted to go to school and she just wanted to be a normal person. And she couldn't. She couldn't do it. But even she said, I'm not a victim. She said she had a great life, you know. And people look on her as the ultimate victim like Marilyn. And I think they both would have hated that. I think they both would have hated I think Marilyn would have hated to have been thought of as this victim who had no control over her life. And I think Judy was probably the same. They... did the best that they could in the times that they lived with the limitations that were presented to them because of what was expected of them because of their gender and their class and their time. I'm off, off 
camera again. It's the only problem with this is I can't, like I said, I can't see, so I do apologise. I will go back to trying to use the, the other camera if I can. To, um... Do the, the rest of it. So I'm not worrying about this looking too tidy because the whole point of it is that it looks messy. It's it's an old rundown hotel at this point. it for those bits we just need to activate it so yeah I am quite looking forward to seeing this Judy Garland thing on the weekend um, yeah I think it'll be very very interesting and I will let you know what I think of it as part of the um, weekly vlog I mean I may even do a full review I don't know I don't really want the entire Judy Garland community coming down on my neck, but then you have to take these things with a pinch of salt. You know, they're there to make money for the companies that have invested the money in making the film or the book. And while it's annoying to um, somebody who knows, for instance, Garland and even more Marilyn and knows more of their history than the general public that's not what's going to sell theatre tickets or books so while I don't necessarily agree with the way that um, the person's portrayed I can understand why it's being done like that I mean for instance the film my Week with Marilyn with Michelle Williams it was a very, very highly regarded film, but a lot of it was a load of rubbish that most of what happened in that film isn't true. Some of it is, and some of it isn't. And unfortunately, you've just got to trust that the viewer going public are clever enough to go and try and say right okay so there's some truth in this but I don't believe all of it let's try and find out a bit more of what happened read the source material read contemporary reports people don't want to do that let's be honest that takes work people want to be told what to think I mean the amount of times I as a Marilyn fan have been told by somebody who's never read a book on her in their life about her and the Kennedys and I'm like, whatever. And they don't want to hear what I've got to say. Yet I've put in not years of research because I wouldn't say it's research because I'm not researching for a book. But I've read most of, if not all of the books that are out or have been put out or were put out. Not so much these days because a lot of the books that come out today aren't written by professional biographers they are self-published by Joe Bloggs in the street who wants to write a book about Marilyn because he thinks oh it's going to make me a few quid and it probably would but um, the ones written by the professionals I've read them all and I will continue to read as many as I can. But the amount of people that in my lifetime have told me that Marilyn did this and Marilyn did that, but they've never actually read anything about her other than what they, what's in the tabloids. And they've expected me to go along with it. it just, it's horrendous. So 
on that note I'm going to leave it there which I think is where John left it as well did the walls we'll let it dry I'm going to tackle the rug next which is going to be red the ceiling I think we'll be probably doing it similar to this but not as dark and then we might put the yellow on um, and the, the sort of caramel and then some white so it's an off-white color I'm not sure yet and the dresses will be various shades of blue so let's see if we can actually zoom out on this now yay we can so that's what we've done so far and it's taken us a good while to do that because I, like I said I've never done watercolors before this is all new to me and I'm still playing with them I, I, I do like the way it kind of looks like the, the, the walls are damp and manky but yeah this book does take water very well and I will be doing some more of this probably in a couple of days. So that's part one of uh, Biblio Horror for the Bibliophile Colorists, or in my case, as I'm calling it, Horrortober. Um, I'm going to go and go to bed, get this video um, rendered and uploaded. Hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Um, like you know like the video share it with your friends if they're interested um, leave me a comment down below and subscribe if you're not a subscriber and if you are a subscriber make sure you've hit that notification bell so it dings every time I upload a video because I am uploading more videos now they are all pretty much all colouring related at the moment <laughs> that will change as I settle back into a routine of having a car there will be reselling videos there'll be marrying videos there'll be photography videos possibly there'll be a holiday vlog when I go on holiday there's the weekly vlog and of course colouring videos and I've got a load of book reviews to film before I go away as well so you'll hopefully be seeing all that very soon so please keep checking back and I will see you all soon. Bye!